there and back again. So thank you everyone for your patience. I've just fixed my phone. So this is day three of the shamanism and meditation 11 day challenge. And today we're going to be speaking about connecting with our soul, connecting with our umoya, which is what we call it in South Africa, which is the energy of the soul. It's called the spirit, the spirit wind. Just adjusting the camera slightly. I'm not going anywhere. So before we do any kind of practice, it's really important with our prayers, it's really important that we center ourselves first. So that's what we're going to do together today. We're just going to center ourselves and then focus our energy on the altar. So this altar represents our connection to our own heart. It represents our connection to our kanya, to our shining. The candle represents kanya, represents shining. The candle represents where we are moving towards. We are moving towards the light, just like the plants always move towards the light. Every human being has, what we say in Buddhism, every human being and every creature has what's called Buddha nature. And Buddha nature means the shining. Every living thing has the shining, has this, this light. So this practice is about learning to really see that light inside of us and also to nourish that light just like we nourish a plant. I know some of you, or a lot of you probably work with plants and I love plants and I love all kinds of plants and I spend a lot of time just watching how the plants grow and what does it do, what do we have to do to nourish the soil of a plant in order for it to blossom and grow in an abundant way. And it's the same as our spiritual growth. So as spiritual seekers, we are gardeners and we garden and we till the soil inside of us. And to do that, we have to dig deep and we have to pay attention. So when you know when you've got a, an indoor plant and it's not doing so well, you have to speak to it. You have to feel the soil. You have to add some water and maybe nutrients. You have to spray the leaves. And it's the same thing with our own spirit. In many traditional cultures, they see the spirit growing inside of us as like a plant growing towards the light. So in order for us to reawaken that spirit, that kanya, that shining inside of us, we have to pay attention and we have to center ourselves. And it's always good to have some kind of altar and a little candle and, and light some incense. It's good to focus the mind and then you focus the spirit and then you focus your intention. Um, because nowadays there's a lot of distraction we know in the world today. However, we are ancient creatures as human beings. We've been around for a long time. So in order to reawaken that primal, instinctual, ancient wisdom inside ourselves, all we have to do is just center, close our eyes and listen to our heartbeat. So this is what I want to do in this moment. So all of you, wherever you are, let's do a little heartbeat meditation together. And then I'm going to focus on the altar and I'm going to awaken the spirits, call on our spirits in a shamanic and some normal way. Okay, so let's just center in. Let's take a moment. And here we go. I'm going to just knock my bowl here. Here we go. Putting your hand in your heartbeat. Take a few breaths in. You can hold your breath and count your heartbeats. It's 
So let's try it together. It's a bit different. So you're breathing in and just hold your breath for a moment and just count your heartbeats. Count four heartbeats and then breathe out. So we'll do that again together. Breathing in, holding your breath and counting four heartbeats. Breathing out. And now we're going we're gonna to shake it up and we're do it slightly differently. Next time I want you to actually release your tongue because in ancient Chinese wisdom, they see the tongue as being connected to the heart. So often when you want to release and connect more with the heart, you just release the tongue. Okay? In yoga, they talk about the lion pose. And in the Sangoma tradition, we talk about the lion as being the connector with the ancestral realm. That's why in a lot of the motifs and fabrics, we have the lion in Gonyama. And we say you need to rise up like the lion. In Gonyama, Jabula. In Gonyama, Marla, the power of the lion. So what we're going to do in this meditation is, I just want you to extend your tongue out. So you're going to breathe in and then you're going to go, and you want to really extend that tongue out so that the tongue releases any kind of toxins and any kind of energy that may be connected to your heart in terms of your difficulty in connecting with your spirit, with your umoya. Okay, so take it seriously. Concentrate. Um, I can't see you, but you can see me. <laughs> so it doesn't matter what you look like when you release your tongue. But it is important that you do it and that you concentrate with it. Okay, so you're sitting up straight, feeling your breath, feeling your passion, feeling your center. Let's do it. Taking a breath in. And on an exhalation, breathing out. Okay. And we're going to do it again. And this time when you do it, I want you to just hold your tongue out. Just leave it out. And you want to feel in your mind and your consciousness that you are releasing, you are letting go. And do this in a passionate way. Remember what I've said in the last two videos? Passion equals compassion. When we're doing spiritual practice, we must be passionate and devotional because that leads to compassion. So feel the fire in your belly, feel the energy of being alive. We call it a mandla. A mindless spirit. Okay, so breathing in and breathing out. And keep the focus in your eyes. We said the focus of the lie, which means that look. It's not aggression, it's wakefulness. The lion pose in yoga is very good at, at showing that. So we'll do it one more time. Sitting up straight, taking a breath in and breathing out. Now wait for a moment and just listen to your heartbeat. Feel your breath. Feel your breath. And listen to your heart. So I'm play my bowl. A little invocation and it's closer.
Feel your center. Feel your spirit. So I'm going to teach you a little chant. And that chant is Umoya, which means your spirit, the wind of your spirit. Umoya wa mo yo yo mo yo wa mo yo yo mo yo wa mo yo yo mo yo wa mo yo yo. It's all together now. It's Moya and Wam, which means my spirit. So what you're doing, you calling on your spirit to come and be with you. You're calling on your own spirit to come and be with you. And as we're calling on our spirit, then we're letting go and then we connect with the wind and we're connecting with the great spirit. That's, that's, that's the whole essence of the chant, okay? So while I'm doing this, I'm just going to focus on the altar and we can do it together. So one more time together, okay? So to feel me, I can't see you. So if you just put a little heart or something so I can feel you, so I know that you're there, okay? Um, so whoever's there and you're listening, just so I can feel you, just push the little heart button so I know that you are there, okay? That's all you have to do, push the little heart button so I know you're there. Thank you. So one more time together, here we go. Oh, my mo yo yo mo yo mo yo yo mo yo mo yo yo mo yo mo yo yo. Now I'm shaking it up. Here was a liba mo yo yo, I was a liba mo yo yo. Hey, I was a liba mo yo yo. Hey, I was a liba mo yo yo. Oh, siang mo lam yangge. Siang olam nyangi, oh siang olam nyangi, oh siang olam nyangi, ye ye, oh nyangi, ye ye, oh nyangi, ye ye. Si abole la nyangi, si angole chikam, si angola bazali bam, si kamago, ndingu tingu lenda, ndo mshoto kwenye kiamba hicho kino yangu koko moya. Tiang Nolan yet and does it, the Magui, Gamalam, Dingo, Jonki, Kelly Lockley, Tiang Nola, and the Dal, the Nolis and Yana, the Nol Tiko, the Nol Kamata, Tiang Nolan Kulukulu, see Kamago, wouldn't lay them and young gave, wouldn't lay them as Ali Bam, and made a bunch of Gohama Pambile, Kamago. See Angola, and the Dal, see a bomb and Kusiam. Feel your center, feel your heart. And listen. Can you feel the wind of your spirit? Can you hear its song? The song of your spirit is the same song as the bird. The song of your spirit is the same song as the eagle the same song as the grasshopper. It's the same song as the termite. All we have to do is listen. And then when we feel a vibration or a vibration as a human being, then we know how to help this world. So today the focus is on umoya. The focus is on connecting with our soul, with our human spirit. And like I said earlier on, for those who've just joined, I said that um, in Buddhism we say everything has the shining, everything has Buddha nature. So the essence of everything is the light. 
And in Sangoma culture, we say everything has kanya, everything has shining. And now it's easy to forget that when we have strife, and it's easy to forget that when we have war, and when a country is at war, it's easy to forget that people have Buddha nature, people have the shining. And as I mentioned yesterday, I experienced at the age of 18 being an army medic in the South African army. And it was the height of the troubles in South Africa. It was a country at war with itself. It was a terrible time. It was a magical time. It was a transfor transformational time. And it was a very scary time. And my solace was meditation because there was no answers. All the politicians were shouting at each other. Everyone was at war with each other. Everyone was wrong. There was so much blame. So I was searching for answers and a friend introduced me to Zen Buddhism. And so I took to Buddhism and I took to meditation like a soldier because literally I was a soldier <laughs> in the military. And um, so when I was sitting and meditating, I took it very, very seriously because there was so much suffering around me and there was so much death and there was so much sadness and, and there was so much ignorance because at the end of the day, there was also a lot of love between people. I think this is what I want to share with you, that at the heights of the troubles, I also saw love between people, people from different cultures who spoke different languages. I saw love for each other as well. And um, so I want to say that to, to people watching this, that even though you may be experiencing your country at war, even though you may be experiencing war inside yourself, know that each person has the shining inside of them. Each person has Buddha nature. And we can never ever forget that. Because miracles happen all the time. We need to address the shadow. And the first way we address that shadow in our country and in our environment and in our humanity, we need to look inside ourselves. Because the practice of being human is not about perfection. The practice is like being a gardener. When you are looking after plants, you don't say this soil is no good and that soil is better. You're not a good gardener if you say that. You're a terrible gardener. What you say is, okay, there's something with the soil that needs some, some nutrients, it needs some attention. And then maybe you pray over that soil or maybe you put certain fertilizers on or you dig deep or you aerate it or you do something. And this is what we have to do with ourselves and with one another. First, we need to look at our own shadows, our own anger, our own ignorance, our own wanting, our own problems and issues. And we can't do that in a way that we also blame and criticize each other. So this is, I mean, ourselves. So we have to develop a sense of humor with our issues and look very carefully at our shadow so that we don't project it on someone else. And I saw this in South Africa. I saw people and I saw a government and I saw a culture that was projecting terrible things on other people and making other people wrong because they had different skin color or different this or different that. And the root of it was terrible, terrible ignorance. And the people who were doing the blaming, like I say, they also had Buddha nature. They also had some beautiful qualities of compassion inside of them. So we need to remember that the root of war is the shadow energy, is ignorance, is blame, is criticism, is all these things. And the only way we can actually improve our communities is by doing these meditations together. Feeling our own pain, feeling our own wounds and singing to it so that it lightens up. Maybe going to speak to a friend. Maybe looking after yourself, putting a blanket around yourself and giving your heart some attention. So these are some of the things that I'm showing you from my heart to yours. And, um, and it's coming from, a, from a, a very difficult place. You know, it's coming from a, a war medic. So that's, that's how I learned all these things because I started as a war medic, literally at the age of 18. And it wasn't glamorous, it was very difficult. But within that, 
I found so much love. I found so much love from my patients, from my special forces soldiers who taught me so much that every single day I honor them. So the reason why I have the soil here at my altar is because the essence of life is water and the essence of life is the soil. And we have to feel the soil inside ourselves and nourish it as I'm nourishing this altar. And Ubuntu is a circle. Ubuntu is a circle. And we start the circle of Ubuntu by connecting with our own hearts. And tomorrow I'm going to be speaking a little bit more about the Ubuntu circle of humanity. So that's something for, for the rest of you. If you want to sign in tomorrow, I'll be talking a bit more about that. So, um, connecting with our soul, our umoya, is is the function of being alive, of being a human being, connecting with our soul, with our umoya. So, right now, we're doing the job, the big job and big work of being a human being, which is first feeling your own pain and not projecting it onto your loved ones or on your community, but just feeling the pain of being alive. And right now, there's a lot of pain in the world because a lot of people have lost their lives because of this COVID pandemic. So we are first feeling our own pain and then feeling the pain of those other people in our community, even though we don't know them. It doesn't matter. Because when you're tuning into your human spirit, you're tuning into the collective. And right now there is a lot of grief. And that's why I'm doing this 11-day shamanism and meditation challenge to just, just feel that grief and then do something with it in terms of a prayer, a song, a chant. Okay, so on that note, I'm going to do another chant. I'm going to bring my drum out. And um, thank you for the heart. Keep, keep pushing that heart button. And just for all of you, um, if I could just ask a favor from all of you listening, if you can share these videos, like my Facebook page, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is John Lockley as well, and also my Instagram account, because this work I'm sharing from South Africa is very sacred wisdom, and it's very good for people to hear about these teachings. These teachings that were transmitted to me in a rural village in Southern Africa, and also from South Korea, they need to be shared, and I, I can do only so much. This is a circle of humanity. If you're feeling these teachings, like my page, share it with your friends, let people know about it. These 11 days are free, there's no charge. If you're feeling called, you can make a donation. Whatever comes from your heart, a donation is, is appreciated. However, if you can't afford anything, then just push your heart button there and share the work with your friends. And that's all I ask for, okay, because Right now, we're in a serious place in, in, the, human, the, human, um, in the human race. And these teachings I'm offering are there to, to help people. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to bring up my drum. And this is to energize the heart so that the spirit can come up. Okay, so get yourselves ready. Feel the spirit of Umoya, the spirit of the drum. Here we go. I'm just going to lower this. Here we go. And here comes my Isi Kubo. I'm going to talk a bit more about my Isi Kubo um, and how I got it in some of the other days. But for those of you who are intrigued, I wrote a beautiful book called Leopard Warrior. And in it I describe how I found my drum and how I connected with these teachings. And Leopard Warrior is available on I Sounds True and on my website johnlockley.com. Leopard Warrior is also available on Amazon.com and, and other outlets. So here we go. Here's my drum.
you feel your heart beating? Show me your heart. I want to see your heart. Show me some hearts. If your heart is beating right now, then push that button. If your heart is beating right now, push that button. Feel your spirit. Feel your pulse. Sitting up straight with dignity for you, for your community, and for your ancestors. So thank you for today. I'm just going to finish off with the altar. So you start with the altar and you finish with the altar. That's the practice. Dawue, shewe, dawu, siabonga, dawu gogo kusemini, dawue, shewe, dawu, siabonga, tobela morenda. giving thanks to the, the wisdom teachings of the human race that have come through us, that's come through me in this moment. And I say, Torbella Morena, which means I bow down and make myself humble in front of the Great Spirit. Torbella Morena, I humble myself at the feet of the Great Spirit. So that's us for today. Thank you. Um, tomorrow, I'm going to be going over the Ubuntu circle. So that's what I'm going to be discussing, the Ubuntu circle, which means how do you connect with your own heart and your own spirit with... So first you connect with your own spirit and then how do you connect with the animal and plant worlds and also with the human, the human worlds. So I'm going to be talking about the Ubuntu circle tomorrow. So just remember Light a candle for those people who have died during the pandemic. Light a candle for their families and their carers. And dedicate your practice. This is the challenge, to dedicate your practice to those people who are suffering. And um, that's why it's an 11-day practice challenge. So let's keep up the work. Let your family and friends know about this work. Get them to join at this Facebook event. And, um, and let's grow the circle. Let's do this together, because as we are holding the circle together in a strong way, we can do something. We can spread more compassion. Remember, passion with your practice leads to compassion. So let's do it together. As we say in, in Kosa and Zulu, Amandla, power. Ngawetsu, to us. So thank you, everyone. Um, thanks for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you.